Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to episode 27 of A Perch of Birds podcast. We're on location at Satellite Coffee again with very special guests traveling all the way down from Taos, New Mexico, a Mr. Ryan Halpin, better known as Earth Shippy. That is, you know what? And I'm going to spell it because like I butchered this throughout the interview, Ryan. My bad on that. It's E-A-R-T-H-S-H-I-P-P-I-E. And that's dot com for Earth Shippy's website or, you know, Ryan's website, of course. That's also his handle on Instagram. Um, and that's where you can check out uh, on his website or his Instagram kind of what's going on with Ryan. He's also got a blog, which you can check out at his site. Um, of course, in this links to any social media and anything that's coming up, you can get from the site as well. We're diving into all things earthships and sustainable living. What is an earthship, you say? Well, essentially it's a house that's made from mostly recycled material that's built in a particular way, facing the sun in a particular way, usually south facing, and utilizing our beautiful planet's many natural resources to heat and cool said home as well as living off of the grid. Ryan studied with and worked with some of the original earthship developers. This guy knows his stuff. Shout out to Auphonic, an AI-based editing software I edit this entire episode with. Let me know if you guys can tell the difference. Uh, also my buddy, Eric, thanks for letting me borrow your Yeti Bluetooth. Or I said Bluetooth Yeti USB microphone. This thing is legit. Might have to pick one of these things up. Definitely, definitely listen to some of the stuff Ryan says and see if you guys can apply some of the baby steps. That's what we talk about is baby steps. And that's the only way that we're going to be able to change the world together is kind of doing little good things every day. Little tiny good things. If you guys like what we're doing, we would absolutely adore y'all if you could get onto iTunes for us and do a little review. Alrighty, guys. Cool. So I'm here with Ryan Halpin, uh, Earthship Hippie. Did I get that right? Earthshippy. Yeah. Earthshippy. See, yeah. I said it wrong. Okay. See, I, Earthship I, Pie. You know what? That might be your, your like Hippie. It, whatever. It could, it could be your YouTube channel name is Earthship it's gonna, Hippie. I, I Earth almost. Shippy. I feel like I almost curse when I say it too fast. Earthship. Oh shit. Oh, shit. Damn. Earthship. Whatever. <laughs> Ryan, talk to me, man. So what? What? What do we got you on the cast for, man? What are you into? I know that you. Uh, your 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 name kind of says what you're into. You're an Earthship uh, savant. Talk to me about what you do, what you're into, man. I I had moved down to Taos like five years ago, did the Earthship Academy, um, and just fell in love with the area. So I stuck around as a hang around, is what you call them there at the Earthships. Hang around. And stayed, did a couple more internships. They had some uh, housing available. I was like, all right, cool. So can I stay here all winter? And they're like, yeah, we don't really have any projects going on. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll pay rent and I'll stay in an earthship. Yeah. And I got a job at the Taos Ski Valley. What's rent cost in an earthship? That's, that's I'm already interested, man. I was there man. five years ago. It was $400 a month, so okay. 100 bucks a week. That's not too bad and at all. a little simple survival with, that it didn't have heating or air conditioning, but it stayed a constant temperature. Sure. Even, even in below freezing weather. Okay. So yeah. so you're renting this place out. You're you're starting to get a feel for it. Had you ever lived in an earthship before? No. Okay. No. Okay. Right well, on. Uh, except for the academy when I first got down. Got there. you. Yeah. Okay. So you were staying in this room and then what picked up from there? You kind of got like more involved with the academy, I'm sure? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I was working at the ski valley because it was, you know, it was a, it's a timing thing to get on with the earthships. If you're there at the right time and they have an opening and all that, it's got to line up for you. And it took a couple of years. I worked at the Ski Valley, did some landscaping. Um, and then one, let's see, June of 2015, my neighbor, when I was living at the Earthships, uh, got me onto the rental staff. Okay. So she's like, hey, I'm looking for somebody. Can you do, can you make beds? Can you do this? I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who can? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially being that it's, I'm sure that there's only so many rooms in an earthship, right? Right. So we had, uh, at the time, I believe five houses. Okay. One of them was 5,300 square feet. 2,000 of that was greenhouse space. Wow. So, That's you know, amazing. And that had four beds in it. And that, that, of course, makes it sustainable for the people that live in it, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. So all the homes there, they're all passive solar, uh, completely off the grid. That's where the name Earthship 
comes from. It's like sure. a ship, but it's on the earth. You know, okay. A boat out in the ocean. That's interesting. Has everything it needs to make life happen. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but I always thought it was just like some hippie term that they just it called is, it. But- <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but it totally makes sense when you say it like that. I mean, that, 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 like it kind of, okay. So I did the, the brewery podcast and IPA. Like, you know, you know, it's Indian Pale Ale, but then he explains to me that there's actually like a meaning to the Indian Pale Ale. They Getting had to, it to the troops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shipping it with higher alcohol content right. so it lasts longer. And I was like, oh, you know, I, never, I honestly wouldn't have put that together. Supposedly, fuck somehow was like the word fuck was like an acronym for something uh shit was it shit is that what it was high in transit yeah there you go there you go Shit. (laughs) Uh, either way one of those fun words but okay so (laughs) so you're so you get brought onto the staff you're starting to do um more of the functions just for taking care of or i mean did you start because i feel like with the academy what do they teach you there? Because I'm sure you're not just making beds. Like you're also upkeeping with the right. earthship because this isn't like a normal drywalled house. Correct. So right. the okay. academy, you go down and you learn basically dirt to doorknobs. Everything from the evolution of the buildings, the earlier models to the models they're building now, what worked, what didn't. And then you get into laying out the tire work, you know, making sure it's pointed south, square, just like sure. a regular house. Right. And they walk you through pounding the tires, putting up the front face as far as wow. the window boxes. Is it? Is Would it... Is it more complicated than building a normal house, like specifically from the ground up? I mean, I feel like tires are soft, whereas cement. Right. No, it's be... a shit ton of work. <laughs> um, <laughs> you start off with, you know, a tire like a 235, 75, 15, something you'd find on like a Ford Ranger. A, okay. A common like a vehicle, truck tire kind truck of. Tire, sure, sure, yeah. sure. And you have that tire without the rim on it. You put some cardboard in the bottom, and then you start filling it with dirt. Wow. All right. And as you're filling it with dirt, you can, you know, I would use my hands or your feet and you start pushing it into the tire. To the insides of it. Then once you get it kind of compacted or full ish, you start at it with a sledgehammer. Sure. So you're taking that tire and uh, bulging it out and making a thermal mass brick. Wow. Okay. So, so thermal mass, would I, would I be correct in saying that that has to do with the sun collecting the heat in the tire? Right. The right. dirt is a thermal mass, and that's why we face them south. Sure. So okay. the passive solar in the winter when the sun's low on the horizon shines into the building through that front face, heats the walls, the floors, and then that thermal mass just kind of seeps in to the rest of the tire work. So it's kind of like a heat battery, right? Yeah. I think I've had it explained like that. Okay. Yep. And then do you guys ever use vats of water, like 50-gallon drums? I've heard that those are used in summer ships to hold the heat, but it, wouldn't that dissipate quicker than... Right. There's There are... Um, you know, heat banks or uh, water banks like that. And some of them, we've had ponds in some of the buildings and they actually like ponds in the earth ship. Yeah. Damn, that's cool. <laughs> you see, and this is great for me. This is normal shit. It's yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Well, that's well, why this I thought. Work. Yeah, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, so, so you were you were brought onto the staff, and from the academy, you'd kind of gain this knowledge. So I'm sure that you're getting to tinker with little projects like that, and like hone right. your, your own skill to be able to do this. So, so, so when you're working on uh, the Earthship at the point that the staff brought you on, were you guys? These are already finished. Earthships. These are finished. They're being okay. rented out. So people from all over the world can come. Whether it's Russia, China, Australia. They come in and they've they've heard about it online. They made the trip to the states and they're like, right. we got to go to Taos, New Mexico. Right. What the fuck are you going? Yeah, to? yeah. There's these buildings made out of garbage, <laughs> you know. And then they come we want to live in them for a while. Come on, but it's not weird. <laughs> when when you see when you walk into them, they're like, oh wow, it's a lot brighter. It smells better. There's you know, and the plants. I think that that plants. must add to the air and all that because you've got to have uh, a temperate inside. Like it's got to be comfortable for the plants. So right. I'm sure it's comfortable for the humans as well. Right? Yep. Okay, because you were saying it's it's a specific temperature. What do they usually sit at? Uh, anywhere from like 65 to 70 degrees Damn. is a pretty constant, you know, and in the summer there's, um, now they have cooling tubes, which you put into the tires and it's just convection, uh, it goes out to the backside of the north side of the building. You open the door. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and the, the tubes go through the berm cause after you pound the tires full of dirt, you backfill with dirt. Okay. Uh, as you go up and that's also your mega source of insulation. Sure. Um, so they cool themselves with that cooling tube just brings cold air through tapping into that earth surrounding the tube brings it down to like 55 degrees. Wow. Dude, I couldn't even try to do that with my, with my, uh, evaporative cooler. (laughs) Like my house is just like struggling with like a window unit and the one on the top. And that makes me laugh because of how inefficient and how expensive is mine compared to a conventional this home versus a garbage house. Right. A garbage house. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to call it a garbage house in the intro. I, know, I, used to make fun. I used to catch guys at the visitor center 
people at the visitor center and be like, it's all garbage. And I'm like, well, it's repurposed yeah. materials. Yeah. I like the I like the word recycled, you know, and because you guys are using bottles in the walls, you guys are using, right. uh, and these bottles are not fresh bottles or like construction bottles. These are just normal bottles. Just staff are provided, discarded. You know, Sierra Nevadas. And That's awesome. Plenty cans of, of Happy Camper. There you go. I was gonna, yeah, Happy Camper. <laughs> yeah. So I've I've been trying to find the chicken killer, and uh, Brian Burt, mm. I haven't found it anywhere. So uh, is it up there in Taos? Do you guys? I haven't seen no? it. No. We waited so long for the seven K IPA to come in a sixty yes. ounce can. Yes. I was like, come on, I see it on Instagram. Where right, the fuck are right? they? Right. And then it's like <laughs> limited release. That's cool though i think they do that like they do that to keep us interested that's what it right. is. <laughs> well and they got they brew killer beer yes they it's do good stuff yeah and they're good guys you know yeah. um no, so, it's a great podcast to listen to so we've got i appreciate that so we yeah. so we've got the bottles from the these guys from, right uh all makes uh, uh going into the wall here and do those create a thermal mass or those are more just for light and uh it's structure they're just little jewels you know because you get different like some of the kombucha bottles are blue or blood bud light platinum is blue yeah some wine bottles have like a, a more I don't know, clear chlorine kind of blue, like okay. a light shade of blue. That's interesting that you say it you like know, that, yeah. Because like when I go get wine, I'm not looking, you know, I look at the bottle like I'm some kind of fucking connoisseur. Kind of <laughs> like you know and what you're people doing? People are like, what are you doing? I'm like, and I'm holding it up to the light <laughs> to see what color that bottle would be when it's empty. <laughs> You Turn know. your light on. Hey, guy, come here. Point yeah. that light through here. I want to look at the. I need this four dollar <laughs> bottle of Pinot Grigio because it's a really cool color. Uh, does it taste bad? Probably. Probably. Eh, That's I'm okay. I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't care. So, so do you feel like while you're in Taos, do you get um, because I've it, so just you know, and, and I haven't touched on it, but I, I don't know as much as I would like to about it. This is a community in Taos of like-minded individuals that got together and created these earth ships, right? Do I have that right? Or how did it work Originally, out? that's how it started. And then it turned into, um, if you, if anybody listening has a chance, Garbage Warrior is a documentary okay. about how Mike Reynolds did the earth ship stuff, got red tagged by the county. They came out and they're like, holy shit, what are these hippies doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And shut them down. I think, see, and I feel like I've, that part of the story I had heard because I think that's one of the things that got them on the map because they were doing like all earthships. It was nothing going to the county and getting a permit and setting up a foundation. Like it was none of that, right? Like they just started Not building. really, yeah. He's okay. just like, fuck it, let's start building. <laughs> and they did. And, um, so once to get around the red tag and get all that shit dealt with, they had to turn it into a legal subdivision, which cost thousands of dollars. Sure, you take the same parcel and split it into multiple parcels. Right, so it's like 637 acres, I believe, or 640 acres, we'll say. He was selling acre lots to the staff for like a thousand dollars an acre that's not bad for Taos, he was man. just kind of subdividing it on his own though he yeah it's like you can have this acre and you can have that one and, yeah 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 you know they nobody got it wasn't like the richest person got the best land they just each paid their thousand dollars and picked a lot out of a hat. That, that, that reminds me of like frontier times or something. You know what right. I mean? Like when they're selling land in mass, you know, here's this 12,000 acres. Come get it. Yeah, first here's your first piece there. of sage. Sure, sure. Yeah. Awesome. And, um, and, and this is all up in the mountains? I, uh, it's out on the mesa. So okay. it's on the west side of the gorge. So that gives you guys perfect, or them at the time, you guys, I mean, across the board, this gives you guys that perfect sun exposure that you need in order for an ownership to really. Right. And it's a super harsh climate. You sure. Know? I mean, it's if you're up close to the mountains, you got more chance of rain. Right. You know, it's a, there's so many microclimates in Taos. Sure. You know, when I landscape there, you'd go from up by the mountains to just kind of close to the mesa to into town. And it just the what would grow there. It's so different. Unique. Unique. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Um, but being out there, it, it gives them a chance to, you know, we can't really dwell, drill a well. So you wow. have to catch roof water. Wow. So the okay. rainwater hits the roof, gets diverted to the cisterns in the back of the building, then it's pressurized and filtered inside of the building. And we make our own little water filtration system. Really? Is that reverse osmosis or how do you guys do it? Just uh there's a, a regular like screen filter right before the pump. Like so many micron or something like well, that. Just a screen, like dead mice. Oh wow. Shit like that. <laughs> Snake. Um, I got three mice this morning, honey. Right, Did you yeah, drink that water? And it's no clear so you can see through it. <laughs> Um, and actually, <laughs> Phil at the Earthships, he's a, the lead the team leader, I guess, or head foreman. He has found like a mouse in one of his filters. Oh, that's horrible. But at least the fil- it got to the filters. And then, you know, the, uh, there's down the line, there's ceramic drinking water filters, catadine, okay, you know, okay. whatever. Those catadines but are the best, man. You are the water company, power company, sewage treatment facility. So you're in charge of all that. You don't have to worry about Dale or Susan or whoever at the water place or the power place or right. the shit right. plant. 
to take care of your stuff. We have your appointment scheduled for seven o'clock next yeah, well, Tuesday with all the shit pouring. We're gonna in your turn house. your water off because we need to do this. And <laughs> right. no, you're in charge. You're like, all right, it's been a month. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Go and you open yeah. the cabinet and you look. And you're like, oh, this is a little dirty. So sure. you just take the filters off, clean them, wow. and put them back. So do you guys notice when something's up? I mean, like you know, you gotta like, you know, the the shit get clogged a lot. I mean, does does an Earthship work pretty well compared to a normal house? I guess. You get used to it. Okay. You know, I mean, like I said, when you were, you're the municipality, so you just, you you get like a seventh sense of the water's not running like it should, or what's that faint noise, or just little things that you notice, or. So you're handy as hell, right? I'm about to bring you down, man. If (laughs) if they don't find me handsome, they'll at least find me handy. (laughs) So, uh, uh, so, so, okay. So, so we've got this maintenance stuff. You said the staff brought you on. I know I'm jumping all over the place. I, sure. I know uh, you've heard some of the cast. That's kind of how I do it. But so, so you came on to the staff and then when did you start doing more of the, like represent, representing that community? I mean, fuck right away. Really? I mean, uh, there's a guy doing a lot of the media tours and he was not going to do that anymore. He was going to focus on other things in his life. And I was like, well, I can do that. It's yeah. just like a check-in. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've been checking people into these buildings, explaining everything. Sure. It's just Pete and repeat Peter on a boat. Right. And, you know, Pete yeah, fell yeah. out. Um, <laughs> so I just started doing the media tours. And then Washington Post, LA Times, you know, the BuzzFeed. Yeah, came yeah, I saw through. the BuzzFeed came through. So they did a, like a BuzzFeed section on you guys. Yeah, Home okay. Buddies was the name of the show. It's okay. like season one, episode eight. Um, and I didn't know who, they're just like, Hey, can you do a media tour? I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah. So I go meet them and they give me a, you know, a, a disclaimer thing to sign. And I look at the top. I'm like, Oh fuck Buzzfeed. Cool. Right. Right. All right. Sweet. Right. Be yeah. on the interwebs. Uh, that's when you tweet it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was just a show that I just kind of walked them through the house and explained how everything works sure. and showed them a couple different other buildings. And- did, did they... Did they seem surprised, like actually being inside of something like that, like yeah. seeing the quality of it and all that? Because it seems to me like it's like an Instagram dream kind of thing. It and I was would... Instagram going right. for a while, yeah. Because <laughs> I, you know, and then you go through it, and then it's like, man, this stuff's real. Like it, you know, to me, it almost seems like, uh, like it would be as fantastic as you think Disney is if you've never been there or something, right? Right, but you, you, you know, know, you go to Disney World and you're like, wow, this place is awesome, and then you start working there and you peek behind the curtain and you're right, like, exactly. Okay, Fuck sure. Disney World. Right, right. Stupid <laughs> mice in the drain. Damn you, Disney. Right. World. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it kind of got, and that's, um, you know, something with, you know, like, don't meet your heroes kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. And that, it it, it kind of got to me after a while. But um, when I took BuzzFeed into the homes or really anybody, any guests that you see pictures online, you see the videos, but then you walk into the house and you're like, holy shit. Like, right. you can smell the rosemary. You can smell the um, lemongrass and the different you know, tropical plants that are growing in there. And it's just so clean because of all those plants sure. purifying the air. The air is constantly being purified. Yeah. It, it, the thing I wanted to do was stay in one and like do the morning sunrise with the heat coming up and, the, sure. you know, and just feel the, the, the effects of, I mean, is it essentially geothermal energy? Or is that speaking differently? Because passive it's solar. Passive solar. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because it's coming from the sun. And I guess we didn't really touch on solar as much. So when you guys do these solar installations, do you guys have to have them cleared by the county and the like? The, yeah, all the buildings now are up to code. The, oh, county, okay. or the county code enforcer guy comes out and he's like, all right, cool, signs off. And he's like, ooh, what's this over here? So they're learning a lot with us. Wow. Um, Is there a different code because it's not a brick-and-mortar house or whatever, like a normal – like are they establishing something new? Yes and no. Like the systems are kind of unique. Got you. Um, and then as far as the construction of it, it's just, you know, typical framing. And then the tire work has been studied by UW-Madison did a – a thick old um, environmental survey about using recycled tires, basically in sure. construction, and they're like, "Yeah, they're pretty solid." Pretty stout. Yeah, pretty. Because st- because I know that. Okay, so when I used to work for the Conservancy, they had a bunch of issues with stuff shifting away. Like when we would build structures, we'd always have to be careful about you know soil having its natural tendency to shift into a void, essentially. Sure. So when you guys build these, do you guys try to find natural? Um, hills and then build into those and use the backing of that like for the north end of it like is it something like that or do you dig straight into the flat ground you you can find like a hillside a south facing slope sure and then just start pounding tires up that slope okay that's um on the way to Taos ski valley if you look up to the left as you're heading up the canyon there's about 13 or 14 earthships way up high in the mountain where they had to, they made them stop building because you can't get fire truck septic truck oh shit you know anything ambulance yeah, yeah. no services oh but wow. that's where mike honed all of the power septic 
sure. sewage treatment, you know, wow. gray water, all that. The systems aspects of it were honed at Reach because you can get shit up there. Right. You just. I mean, uh, you kind of are on an island, right? right? In a lot yeah. of cases, that's interesting. And then, how far were those guys from grocery stores? Like, is there any dependency on that? I mean, I know that a lot of these cats, I would imagine, are full on hippies and they don't eat a lot of animal products, <laughs> right? I, I'm, am I getting that wrong? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's an eclectic mixture of sure. people. Um, it, like we were talking earlier, when the crew could buy land for $1,000 an acre. Right. Well, after a while, after that legal subdivision kicked in, then it went up to like $50,000 right. for an acre. Right, because he's having so cost and he wants to... He had to pay $35,000 to put in a road and another $30,000 oh for God. archaeologists to walk before they put in the road to look for arrowheads and right. shards of clay oh and shit God. like that. Um, so now it's turning into like a retirement community because okay. a lot of the people that can afford them are older people right. or trust fund kids right. that come out here and well, essentially, you know. I mean, unless you're Ryan, your nine to five is not going to allow you to get up to this island to work on it every day. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I could ride back and forth to my IT job in Albuquerque from my Earthship because I feel like that's going to be kind of tough. Depends on where you put it. You okay. Know? If All we right. can, I can see it, that. The hard part is getting them into a residential or a, a urban setting okay. because it's so different from what we're used to seeing, you know, sure. four walls and a pitched roof. And do, do you feel like if that was to be something that was in the future, do you think that the municipalities, the counties and things like that would have lobbying or pushback because they're not going to be able to make, you know, I got, I got grief in my, in my damn HOA because I didn't switch over to the new trash can guys. I said, no, I'll take my own trash. And they were offended. <laughs> really? So I want, you know what I mean? Like if I, yeah. you know, cause I know rainwater is a thing, right? In some states where they, they won't allow you to collect rainwater. I don't know if that's here. Cause it used to be in Colorado. Now you can, you just can't collect it for, um, like, like agricultural production. You can't just irrigate a whole field of strawberries to then sell them. Okay. For something, probably cause they sell it to Texas. I believe I'm not that's totally silly. hip on all their laws. But, but again, I mean, you know, that shows you like the politicians are going to fucking come in and mess with it. Do you see any of that happening already or no? Like, and, and I, I don't want to get way off on a tangent right. on that, but. Um, I think it's just exposing the people that like the code enforcers will say, just showing them, you know, if we could get them to come to Taos and just stay in those buildings and be like, sure. oh, okay. Right. See, I thought it was like this, but in reality, they're like this and they're actually up to code and here's an actual set of plans that are stamped and so 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 that being in mind when buzzfeed did their thing were they did they because they seem a bit more uh i use this word very uh you know liberally but are they very liberal themselves i mean are they because because i would think that they're going to be like this is a sustainable way to live and you know right Right. Did they kind of take that angle on it hipster millennial folk. there we go okay yeah all right that's that's kind of what i felt like you know and i hate to I don't want to classify or put them into a certain category, but you know, most of the people that come in, whether it's Buzzfeed or the lady from the Washington post or whoever, they're just, they're, they're used to living in an apartment or a regular house where you just turn the tap and the water comes. You don't have to worry about it here. They had somebody like me that's in the house just about every day to monitor those systems, make sure everything's working properly. Yeah. Cause like say the gray water, for instance, you go from where the water is coming off of the roof into the cisterns, through the filters. Hopefully, there's no mice. <laughs> then you use the water in the sink or the shower. That water goes down the drain into that gray water planter where all the plants are. Yeah, okay. I've seen that. So that's one of the ways that you guys recycle the water right. with the gray water. Okay. So that feeds and waters the plants. The plants are also kind of cleaning up that water as they're use, you know, as it's passing through the root Pull system. Pull off the hard stuff, the gross stuff. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, the, like the soap scum and shit like that. You know, we try and use the best soaps possible as far as natural like based. Biodegradable or whatnot. Yeah. Okay. And then when you flush the toilet from a reservoir at the deep end of the gray water, it then goes to the toilet. And flushes the toilet. So you're using water that's been used in the sink or the shower. Wow. Feeds and waters the plants, flushes the toilet out to the septic, and then out to a black water leach field where in the high desert mesa, um, you can start growing whether it's trees, Apache plumes, Russian sages, you know, stuff for the pollinators or shade or yeah. whatever. But you can start to regenerate the mesa because that soil is all but dead. Sure. You know, until and, you, and then you said it's also a harsh environment, so trees would be good because you're breaking the wind up and you're creating right. uh, uh, shelter for yeah. animals and shit like that. That's fucking genius. I mean, man. there's owls uh, at Phil. I keep bringing him up, but he's been there since 1992 or three, whatever, since the beginning. Um, and he's got like 20, 30 foot trees in his blackwater cell. And occasionally he'll get migratory owls that come through and all sorts of that's different wildlife cool. and birds and stuff you would never see out there. Right. Well, and that's the thing that I, um, 
I would want to look forward to is is trying to see like kind of an oasis pop up around these things because it sounds like they have the capability to do that without straining resources right. or somebody trying to go grass or their fucking beautiful backyard. Right. They have to pump from the ground more likely than not and a place like here, Arizona, anywhere in the Southwest, we do not need to be doing that. No, yeah, and that's where the gray water is very important and then that works that's with so the black cool water. It, yeah, yeah, like... But there's where the, you know, most conventional home people are like so you, and the where is there gray water tap on the kitchen sink no the gray water doesn't come out of the kitchen yeah. sink it goes into here and right. just to the toilet it's just that knowledge and exp, you know well and i'm sure yeah trying to teach to that it. yeah because the consistency uh for me would be i come from like a, a normal house you know mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm used to consistency and like i know the fix like i call the freaking the septic guy if shit goes down right. you know but out or there if it doesn't go down right <laughs> And so, and then when you guys dig out there on the mesa, you guys run into a lot of bedrock and shit like that. You can. Uh, it depends. On, like sometimes when you're digging for the septic, we've they've run into it where they're they had almost all the tires pounded, get ready to put the roof on. They went to dig the septic and they're like shit. We need to go five courses taller. Wow. Yeah. Because if we don't bring the level of the finished floor up for the plumbing to get to the septic, right? Because of the rock. Because you need to have some drop in order to make right. it all work. Yeah. Holy cow! So I mean, so, that's one of the challenges that you run into. Sure. <laughs> and, I mean, and and are you guys then? Uh, you know, and I may be saying a lot. I don't know if, if this would be true, but are you guys kind of the authority on building earthships? Then I mean, is there another entity like you guys vetting these processes? As these far systems? as the tire construction buildings, yeah, that's. If you want to learn, you go to Taos and you learn from Phil and Rory and, you know, all the guys that have been there for years yeah. and have built all the different models throughout the community, throughout the world. Sure. You know. And, and, and is there, like, when you go to the Earthship Academy or that area, are you able to see kind of the evolution of the thing? Like, is there early ones that they still have left yep. up? or Okay. okay. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's the books and they have slideshows and you do get to tour some of the different versions of them so you okay. can see and they'll explain well we used to do it like this and now we do it like this because of right yeah. well and come look at this one this is why this didn't work and so i so so, so with that like when you guys are, are doing these these next iterations is there like a a blueprint i guess now like you guys have one setup like this is the the jedi of earthships if i want to make one tomorrow the global model the global yeah. model so okay. they have one it's basically it's just a rectangle um footprint of the building and north slope roof that way the water goes into the cisterns that line the back of the building and they've just over the years they've figured out the roof pitch amount of insulation thermal wrap and i, I hope i'm not talking too much no no, no please do I, I, um, I like to hear things that people would have to google and learn about well, that's like the point stop you know? me if you have a question <laughs> no <laughs> but well the, so, so most of this stuff is still sustainable stuff like i'm not having to go to home depot to buy most of this stuff or like how much with, of it would you say it depends now the ones that you they building in the community there are you know i think it's only up to 40 percent repurposed recycled materials oh, okay uh just by the covenant of the earthships and the county now, and yes yeah, so, okay so that's like a, a give and take with the the code i'm sure to make sure that you're meeting that code because you have to have some stuff like you right. need fresh wire you can't go tear it out of a house and stick that in the earthship maybe you could wink but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like what now when they go to say puerto rico colombia uh haiti they went to the Andaman islands after that big tsunami in 2005 sure. You know, when you go to places like that, there's fucking building materials all over. Sure. Bottles, cans, tires, sure. you know, sure. things that they can use to just kind of, I wouldn't, I don't want to say scab together a building, but repurpose those materials yeah. that are all over. Sure. And I mean, that would really make for interest. I mean, to, to, that embodies what you guys are trying to do. Like you're using, you know, in a third world country, you know, I'm not going to pick any one in particular but some place where you see trash piles and kids running through those sure. i mean that's housing right there for them that they're kind of walking on some of it, yeah. potentially sure you know i mean if you get enough plastic bottles and find somebody that can mix up some mud or some kind of you know adobe type you know uh, medium yeah yeah and then you start laying the bottles out in that mixture you can start building the house and i think uh what's interesting about that i saw that there is some there's in, in a, the reason why i keep bringing it back is because we know the the power of media is one of the reasons why i have you on the podcast of course mm-hmm. but to tell people about things like this um i know that brad pitt was into some uh and still is he's into some um stuff with some other celebrities who knows how much of it he actually has to do with it but that's how i heard about it um they take hemp and they grow the hemp wherever that is or is not allowed and okay. they create um they create wall panels out of it and they're making like almost like octa houses out of the hemp itself. Like hempcrete? I think so. Yeah. Is that okay. what it is? Okay. Cause I know that they're trying to make like prefabbed almost. So it's not as hard to, oh, Okay. you know what I mean? You don't have to, like if you were to take it and go globally with it, it wouldn't be as hard. You could ship that product sure. and it'd be prefabbed and you just kind of clip it together. I well, guess. that hempcrete, that's supposedly it's strong as shit, fireproof, 
You know, I mean, it's resilient it's good material. Stuff. Yeah. But and then hemp uh, sustainable. Like you can regrow yeah. hemp. That's the whole thing of it, right? Right. In the summer, yeah, you can just, boom, grow enough for, I mean, if we wanted to move towards biodegradable plastics, you know, hemp plastics and right. papers and clothing and stuff so, like uh, that. Fucking Sun Chips had those plant bags for a long time. And yeah. they, en- they ended up stopping doing that. But in Canada, apparently, that kept going. And they're still doing okay. it in Canada, but they're not doing it in the U.S. It probably cost... A- 15 fucking cents more a case sure <laughs> sure well you know what but what's funny that you say that so i just came back from california doing the whole disney you know schmooze and sure. Nice so, sure. so they have these bag yeah thanks they have these uh these bags uh prices there so you can actually say at walmart which okay. is funny because here you know we don't have that in new mexico because we're not close to the ocean i think that's what it is plus you know uh, political climate on and on and so forth but um you have to pay for each one of your 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 bags each one of them at like 15 cents you nice. know what i mean and and uh i know there's been a lot of studies done either way but i feel like that is is the direction to go in order to force people to kind of take that mindset. You know what I mean? When it comes to their trash, I've seen a uh, San Luis Obispo when I was there, they actually took out all of the drive throughs because idling in your car burns more emissions supposedly than you driving. Okay. So, yeah. So all of them are gone. So you see Taco Bell's with a drive through. You can't drive in it. It's all shut off. Like it's, it's like just, city thing. They don't have any bags, at any of the stores, no plastic. You can't even choose to buy it. Nice. So they've gone full hippie. You know what I mean? And this is an extremely, you know, Ferraris driving down the road, Jaguars. It's one of those right. more rich areas of California. You know, it, it, but I think that's the direction that, uh, um, we should go and make it to where, you know, you've got guys like Brad Pitt. I, I know I keep coming back to it that, that are pushing that agenda, Buzzfeed that are pushing that agenda right. that, you know, these things are sustainable and it's not like it's fucking hard to do. It's just a matter of bringing cloth bags, let's say, and or using the trash that you're going to throw away to recycle and stuff like that. Um, I, I tangented a little bit, but I know that the overall, uh, the overarching theme of your website, which I see is still kind of in development. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you got ads, bro. I don't even have time ads. and things and <laughs> right, stuff. Right, right. Uh, but the the overall uh, theme of it was to uh, teach people more about sustainable living. So, what what things are you pushing on right now on your own that are kind of uh, enforcing that that mantra? It's just taking like uh, baby steps. Because if you try and tackle, if you everything you see that's going on, that's like okay, that's I don't like that. I want to fix this. Da, da, da. If you try and tackle all that shit at once, you're just going to get overwhelmed and not be able to do it. Like with the putting up a podcast, you know, right. if you got, I got all this equipment and I want to do yeah. this and then no, perfect. It's very overwhelming. No, you got to sure. start small and just put out your first one and then your second one. And then all of a sudden you're right. at 25, 26 right. episodes, right. right? And you're getting better at that to where. Sort of. That's. Before, <laughs> well, when you first started though, it's probably like, okay, shit, I need microphones and oh, this yeah. and that. Uh, and now it's like, okay, hey, don't give me a minute. I just got to put right. this shit in. And well, well, honestly, I thought at first was, was it was just going to come to me. And honestly, the part that came to me was when, as soon as I hit record, that came to me. But everything else, it was just like a big buildup, you know. And I'm, right. I'm sure you and see that same thing with, like you said, it's like another day for you to wake up and live sustainably, yeah. right? Because it just it takes that time. So what's a? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I do mean to put you on the spot. What what's step? What would be a small step that you could you could recommend to people that maybe I wouldn't think about, being that I'm from, you know, cul-de-sac urban <laughs> environment, you know? Um, when I worked, I. like I was living in Denver and I worked in a corporate office, and I would bring in. I had my own coffee cup there. They okay. supplied paper coffee cups or whatever, or sure. styrofoam. And I was like, no, that's stupid. I got a nice Guinness one I bought at the factory. Guinness. And, yeah, St. Nice. James here. Gate. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> the... Anyway, uh, so I would bring that in because I like my coffee cup, and it was mine. I could use that for coffee, for water, for whatever. Yeah. Um, I'd also bring in, they would supply plastic forks, knives, spoons, paper plates. I was like, fuck that. I brought in my own plate. My own fork, my own knife, my own spoon. Okay. So I had like my own little kitchenette set up at my desk. So bring your own shit that's reusable. Right. Okay. Versus it, just single use, drink your coffee, throw it away, go get another cup of coffee, drink it, throw it away. Sure. You know, I've watched people burn through five, six, seven cups a uh, day, and I'm like, fuck. Guilty. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but I, it, you know, and I want to, I want to lean in that direction more. And, and I think the more that we add to it, I know we got to get, we should have done this at a bar, you know? I should, well, some- <laughs> no, I'm from Wisconsin, bad idea. <laughs> We need a Uber to Taos, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, fuck, what was I gonna say? Oh, it was on th- oh yeah. Okay, so I go to these. I go to these. Um, you know, uh, these hippie uh, deals. My my wife is pagan, um, okay. and so we go to the uh, Beltane. I don't know if you're savvy with Beltane. It's the opening of the season for pagans. Okay. Um, essentially, like like they bunch of hippies get out in the forest and we all we all hang out out there lots of naked men and women but sure. you know lots of bongos and stuff like that and guitars and there's like a bard's night and all this stuff like love it's, it's, and it's, peace yeah, oh it's awesome yeah. it's amazing um but people bring their own uh mead they bring their own uh wines and what i thought was interesting which honestly like you say that and again small steps things that people just may not 
know, um, this guy butt naked walking around like all morning. Hey, good morning. You know, and I got there with my son. I'm like, Jesus. Hey, man. Hey, how you doing? Everybody's just waving. Just not just swinging, your hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, but the dude's carrying a glass jar full of water. And I just I, I was like, what is I thought it would maybe like it's fucking moonshine or something. Right. All right. What you got, man? He's like, that's no, just water. Yeah. And 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 then I noticed that more people had that. And like, so I asked, you know, like the the hairy armpitted hippie girl that was down at the bongo circle. Sure. You know, I'm like, hey, it's stinky. You know, but no, but like she was super cool. And I, I, I kind of wanted to like bounce off of her. Like, what, what are the, some of the things that you do kind of in that same mode and she's like well we bring the glass jars so that way we can continue to use them she's like i've had this one for almost two years and i'm like really it's like a fucking pickle jar right. but that's her water bottle yep. that she takes with her whether she's camping whether she's you know and then the guy the same thing i don't i'm pretty sure that i talked to him in passing i don't know if i stood there too long sure. <laughs> no you're cool it's just My eyes are from up afar here, yeah. yeah no we'll just talk over here <laughs> yeah i'll shake your hand later got any shorts uh, no but <laughs> but yeah but but so i could i could absolutely see that being one thing is just take care of the 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 stuff that you know air quotes is disposable really shouldn't be thought of that way you know what i mean right i mean it's a, the things that have come along for convenience you know like hungry man dinners and shit like that right. and it used to be you know, I, I don't know. I used to be. I was born in '83, so. But before, you know, grow a garden for the war, you know, and support right. it. You know, grow right, your right, own right. food, do your own shit. And then sure. the war was over, and they're like, "All right, TV dinners and fucking right. Kool Aid, and here's a bunch yeah. of shit that the, the quicker, the faster, the better. Right, make it easier on mom, or this way, mom can get out of the house and get a job. And, sure. So, do you grow your own vegetables, fruit, stuff like that? I'm going to. I'm still working on my house. Okay. So. I guess I didn't get to that. So you're building an, an, your yeah, own Yeah, I build my own, just a very small, single room at, initially. Um, and there's a YouTube video about that. Uh, you can find the, oh shit, I think I took the link off my Instagram page, but at any rate. The, the I think you have your Earth's Earth Shippy. Yeah, Earth Shippy. Earth, on, Earth Shippy. Okay, you, you should put it on there, because I feel like I could tag everything to that. Yeah, and I got to find out how to do that through WordPress. Is how Okay. I'm, yeah, and I uh, honestly, I'm I'm learning WordPress. I'm not as good at it as I'd like to be, but well, and that's you know, it's one of those things where I was uncomfortable with it. I had the name, I paid for the website, right. let it sit for a year, and I was like, all right, you got to fucking start something. putting something. Yeah, because it goes to charge you again. You're like, you son of a bitch. Because if that's you're not, right. well, if you're not doing it, you know, you don't get to put it out there and get the response from the people that actually see it. Like, right. You know, I get people in like England and shit that are reading it. And, hey, good job. And yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. People are reading it. Right. If I if I keep on it, I can keep getting better. Look back. And be like, all right, I didn't make much sense in that. And I just kind of left it off at the end. Right. Like, bent, okay, that's enough for today. Right. Publish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wrote my first blog yesterday. Um, and like, I know it sounds like kind of counterintuitive for me. Like, I would write blogs, but I don't ever write usually. I usually just do right. the cast. You know yeah. what I mean? You know? So, like, I'm, uh, you know, I run like a motherfucker all the time. So I have people that are constantly asking me about that advice, you know, and I had put out that running podcast that I had done. And then I talk about it all the fucking time. But I wrote one yesterday and I got, I was in the, I was in the weeds, man. I'm like, yeah. And then, like, out of the blue, I'm like, fuck. Well, now what do I say? You know, like I got two yep. pages in and I'm like, thoughts over, you know, like, and it's not a complete thought, you know what I mean? The whole thing. Yeah. So I got you. Yeah. That's, well, it's not easy to write. My first one was kind of uh, like you asked earlier, like what are things you can do? Um, you know, taking your own utensils to work, sure. your own coffee cup. Also, like I'd go to the grocery store and when I was living in Denver, I'd just be like, all right, you only get five things that have any kind of packaging. Wow. Okay. Right. So I'd limit my, so then I was like, okay, well, I can't get the cherry tomatoes that come in the plastic little container. Right. You get like actual tomato or whatever, you know, you yeah, get yeah. the bulk kind of stuff. Sure. Then I noticed I was starting to eat better food because I wasn't getting the processed plastic wrap shit. Sure. And then I was putting the time into it, cutting. Because you're having to take the time, you're taking out yeah. the convenience of it. Right, sure. kind of. Well, I saw that Whole Foods gotten a lot of shit right as Amazon took them over because they had oranges that were in a plastic container. They right. were like, why the fuck are you putting oranges peeled into a plastic container? Or bananas that are wrapped in cellophane yeah. individually. It's like, what are you fucking It's got to fucking, it's packaged. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it, 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 if they did the plant-based packaging, which I don't understand how that didn't just become epic huge when it first was, you know, scienced and shit. Right. You know, but if they had not if it had not just gone on the back burner, like I feel it, it ultimately has, you know, everything could be made out of that packaging. You We're going to get to it. It's just, they're making, I don't know who they is or who I'm the condemning they. here, but <laughs> the, they, the oils, <laughs> um, but the amount of money they're probably making for just that small or not small, I guess, but that portion of the product, you know, the packaging of it. Yeah. All right. Hey, we got this new fucking, I don't know. Right. Rapo 2000. That yeah. Yeah. Uses a quarter of the cellophane, but right. you're still putting it in right. there and it's still getting thrown well, away. Well, I like the water bottles. They're like, we shrunk the top of the cap. It's now 30% better for the right. world. And it's like, super thin. And yeah, yeah, it's like, come on, man. 
Well, you know, uh, so so you know, you see the evolution of like beer cans. As silly as that is, like, how many times do you still find those cans out in the you know the river or something? Those old school ones that were the peel off tab, right? You know what I mean, pull tab. And and for some reason, like any old timer, you know, no matter what their uh, the political spectrum is, they're all like, well, we got rid of that because it was bad for the environment. It's like, well, how does that fucking make sense? You know what I mean? To you, to you conservative fellas. And, and when or, I see that shit, I pick it up and put throw it in the back of the truck because I'm going to put it into a wall. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> see, I love that, man. And yeah. if everybody else had their own their own structures. But that doesn't mean I don't I want to see people, you know, driving around throwing shit out Hey, can windows. you guys throw some trash yeah. so I can go pick it up? Well, I, I, I thought about it. some of the people. back roads in Taos, like it's it, like the fucking garbage or uh Grocery bags are like the New Mexico state flower. Uh, that is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, it just pisses me off. And they're like, do you need a bag for this? I'm like, I have, I have one thing. Yeah. I can carry this to my car. Gas stations. They're the worst. Yeah. They're always wanting to bag everything, especially if you buy alcohol. I'm like, who is the asshole that was lobbied to help the bad guy by saying every alcoholic beverage needs a bag Put to, it in a to walk out? Bag, yeah. Which, so, but still, that's bad too. Yeah. But, you know, but, but even <laughs> then, you know what I mean? Like you're, 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 you're adding to it. Whereas we can't have our sun chips plant bags. I I'm on about the sun chip. I just thought it was the coolest thing. And I was like, this is it. They're going to change it all over to this. Right. And then it all went away. I was like, man. Or, well, like you said, gas stations. I've seen people in front of me with like a Mountain Dew, a bag of chips and a fucking Snickers, yeah. put it in a bag, they get in the, the 10 fucking steps from the door to their truck or right. car, and then they open Pull the, the bag Mountain off. Dew and, do it and yep. just throw the bag on the yep. ground. I'm like, gee, did you need to double bag right. that just to uh, get it to 15 steps to your car? It looks pretty, though. It's a pretty packaging, you know, and that it's sells so, so much. Easy. I can carry it by the right? handle. I get my oranges are already peeled except for the plastic <laughs> around it. It's so stupid. So so you're eating better uh, uh, in the evolution of, of the Ryan here. Um, yeah, I mean, you, know, you get setbacks every so, once in a while. Right. Oh, of course. <laughs> Fuck, shit. I drink a lot of beer, man. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It, to me, that's, I guess, my... Like, I'm big on not drinking soda. Um, sure. My wife will say, you fucking drink soda when you eat Taco Bell. Well, I like Taco Bell, and I like soda when I eat Taco Bell. But usually, I'm only doing water, coffee, and beer. Um, my buddy is super big. The Live New Mexico, uh, Jared, I don't know. He did two of the casts on there. Okay. But he's yeah. the outdoor guy. Um, he, he cut out sugar completely and lost a lot of weight. Right. Feels better, more energy. Um, you know, there was a Joe Rogan podcast with some some doctor of some sort talked about the couple evils. yeah yeah they, he touches on it all the time but about how scientists in the early 60s were actually paid money to endorse uh, uh essentially uh sugar over fat and in, in terms of like hey the you know the government says you know these they that we talk about right and and this ultimately was this great cloak and dagger thing that led to americans putting fat free everything when really you should have sugar free and not like in the sense of putting fucking uh sugar sweeteners that are not sugar whatever you call them well you know anytime I mean? you see fat free or sugar free it's just chemical shit storm exactly because there's something to make that up you know yeah. I, th I think stevia is probably the one that's supposed to be good for you but who knows how that's made you know what i mean i mean i'm right. sure it's like Joe fucking Rogan palm oil shit out of it yeah so. but you know who, who you know it's all bad at one point but i think that the idea again is like you know we we have trained ourselves to eat sugar um as Americans, I think it's a drug, right? It is. I mean, you know, there, there, I watch these Buzzfeed videos, funny enough of these guys from other countries that'll try our food and they uh, time and time again, the first thing they say is how sweet it is. Yeah. They say that's fucking sweet. You know, like barbecue sauce. For some reason, all of our barbecue sauce in the U S usually has a large portion of sugar, molasses, molasses, yeah. uh, brown sugar, whatever. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, but what I'm ultimately alluding to is do you, do you take a stance on, um, your health differently now that you have become a ship hippie? I can't like, preach because i still eat like shit every once in a while yeah. <laughs> like, i'm pulling a lot of burger be like yeah, give me a give hey, me it's a burger with bacon and right? cheese please plus i'm sure now that you're you're in from wisconsin you're seeing what the the green chili is all about i'm sure you can't help yourself <laughs> it's like cheese curds in wisconsin yeah you know, just, oh man Ooh, i love <laughs> squeak, squeak. Cheese. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love i love cheese. i had a guy that actually made my boss made cheese like fresh cheese uh -huh. and like and and he was like telling me all about it and i think he's from i think he's from wisconsin maybe yeah. he's not i don't know where he's from He's fucking up north somewhere there. Sure. But he's, yeah. yeah. Yankees up there. Yeah, yeah. But okay, so your cheat, I cut you off. I'm sorry. So the, so you do So as far as days. eating, yeah. Like, I mean, I'll eat some bullshit, but for the most part, I try and eat, like, if I'm doing, you know, get, like, just chicken breast, you know, broccoli, potatoes, like, back to my five things of plastic every sure. time I okay. go to the store. Try and get as much fresh as possible, which is kind of difficult living out in the mesa where I'm at because sometimes food keeps, sometimes it doesn't. If you sure. have refrigeration or if you don't. That's a good question. Do you have refrigeration? Uh, where I'm staying at now. So unfor fortunately, excuse me, uh, my neighbor is having me house sit for her. Okay. She's down here in Albuquerque taking care of her parents, helping out with things. They're getting older and age. Are we not supposed to tell her you're here? Right. No, she knows. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, hey, she she, she came back for a couple of weeks at the grandson, so oh, they're gotcha. hanging out at the okay, house. I'm like, okay. all right, I'll be back in a couple of days and do the cats and stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but so there I have a refrigerator. She's got a DC, runs off a DC power direct current. Interesting. Freezer okay. off of her solar panels. Does that scare you at all to have DC running in the house? No. No? Yeah, it's cool. Oh. No, it's... it's I mean, uh, if you know how it works. It I just, works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It oh. freezes things. Oh. And then we just move frozen water to the fridge. So every day I just get up and take the half thawed out water, put it in the freezer, put the frozen water containers back in the fridge. So I got one appliance running. Wow. And then... You just keep out, you know, just little things. So in you're your kind daily of emulating life. like an ice box from back in the day, yeah. where you'd have to put an ice piece chunk of ice yep. in your ice box. That's why you know, air quotes. That's why they call it that. Put too. one down by my beer, one up by my kombucha. <laughs> you know. Give me some of that right here. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> kombucha and beer. That will that'll keep you regular. One for kombucha in the morning right. and beer in the night. Right. <laughs> oh, it's amazing the fermentation both ways. So so your so so your lifestyle is essentially just getting probably I would say back to more simple. Less complicated, less processed. In theory, yeah. Sure, okay. Trying to as much as you can. Um, and, you know, when I eat, sometimes, like, I'll go to Smith's and I'll be like, fuck, I don't feel like... And I'll just get chicken tenders or some shit yeah. for, like, oh, sure. $3, yeah, you know, yeah. and you get a bag of 20 Those, of them. But then I get home and I'm looking at it and I'm like, god damn it. <laughs> Why are you doing this <laughs> the yourself? The bag's all see-through from, yeah. this, from the... From You're going to sh- have a weird movement in the morning. Yeah. And- <laughs> it was like on The Simpsons. Remember the doctor gave him the fat diet and he had him. He said, if if you can rub it on a bag and it doesn't go clear, th- then you can't eat it. He said, you have to rub it on a bag and the bag has to go right. clear and then you're allowed to eat it, you know? Yeah. So, so, okay, so uh, that made me think of another question. So do you guys in the, in the um, earthships and in the classes and the, in the, in the, the thought process, um, again, all different people come to these things, but is there um, a reliance on things like chickens or pigs or cows or anything like that in these earthships? Do you see that trend anywhere? Um, there's a couple of them have chickens there. They, they come out and they're in love with the lifestyle, but a lot, it's hard to get away from the conventional way of living where you sure. just go to the store and you get the light bulb chicken or the fucking whatever. Right. Get your and eggs and bacon in the morning, your yeah. thing of orange juice. And you don't, you know, like Joe Rogan says, you don't, you're not connected to where it came from. You know, you're, you're all against, you know, you were like PETA. Yeah. we got to take care right. of animals, but you still eat that stuff. Right. And well, this, it's just pulled pork sandwich. It right. came like that. That's I raised how that it chicken. Was. What do you mean? Yeah. He had a great life. <laughs> oh yeah. Now it's, if you can do that, but it's it's some work, you know, to yeah. raise the chickens, get oh, yeah. them, hang them up, cut their neck, sure, p- harvest them, and well, and then if you guys are kind of out there like that, and if you guys at any point are relying on the eggs or something like that, you know, and a coyote comes in, you know, it's game over, you know what I mean? So to that's have where your... you build a bottle wall around your chicken. There you coop go. I love the bottle walls. I'm gonna make yeah. one. Yeah, no, make that's one. Super cool. <laughs> and that's why I I got the video editing stuff so I can start, you know, put something like that on the YouTube. Is sure. just how. Do you plan on keeping it under the same moniker, under the same title? I imagine, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I don't work for Earthships anymore. Um, it's just, it, and this is probably, I started looking at this whole retrograde of the planets thing, and I was reading about what planets in retrograde and what happens, and I was like, oh, fuck, right on the head. <laughs> you got deep. Like, don't make any impulsive decisions. And I was like, fuck you, here's my case. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Yeah. I'll mess up next. Give me but the next what's one. good from that, you know, is um, I got a lot of experience from them. Uh, I left kind of abruptly and if my boss ever listens to this you know hopefully she'll <laughs> understand that it's just i don't know what happened someday we'll have a beer and laugh about it sure mm, probably sure. be a little bit sure <laughs> a, l- a little of a, a tense beer but I mean, a difference in opinion is what we could probably ultimately yeah, say yeah i mean okay. it was just a whole there's a lot of things like i said you know you go to disney world it's really cool you start working at disney world and you're like holy shit you right. know you peek behind the curtain how they keep the the whole thing up is yeah is, and you're like fuck snow white Goofy's an <laughs> asshole. Fuck. <laughs> i just wanted to break character one time so i can call him out <laughs> damn it um I forgot where I was going with that, but oh yeah. So at any rate, um, yeah, I'm not working there anymore. Uh, and I, but once I left there, you know, I, I had a lot of opportunities like almost right away. Wow. You know, which well, was you cool. You have legitimately, even without um, being the, the, the initial founder of the thing. And I would imagine your age has to do with that because I'm, you know, when did those guys start that? He Mike came out here in like 1969. He started building his first Earthship in like late 70s. So, so you're essentially the the new generation of Earthship right. builders. So you're getting, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can say that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because it was what was it? Uh, generation Z, right? Was that 
Or what, Some, Generation I X. I think that was the 80s. The Facebook I'm said I'm, I'm a Xennial. A Xennial. 80, okay. 70 something to 85 or I don't know. There's yeah. something, whatever that acronym is. We're all fucking human. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Earth, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Whatever that acronym is. We're all fucking human. Right. Exactly. So, so you're you're gonna be the new like the new the new iteration of this thing, and and you you know I I think that the way that it's conveyed can be done better with somebody that's familiar with social media, familiar with things like that, you know, and and you doing it the way that you're doing it, I think is good. Like you start with the podcast. You start with the things that you have, but then you move on to like a podcast, excuse me. Sure. And then, you know, the, the evolution of that, I think, could be like YouTube. Do you see yourself putting on like, uh, um, you know, I'm not going to put you way ahead, but do you see yourself teaching in the future, whatever that may end up being online, maybe? Let's I mean, say, anywhere or, I can, any way I can spread the knowledge and just bring it to people, um, get it out there like, this is how gray water works, this is how black water works, or this is how you can start moving towards that. <laughs> type of lifestyle right you know? and that's what i want to do that i downloaded a little video video editing software started watching their free tutorials yeah. i'm like all right cool so i put together like just still frame pictures of right when i worked at their ships I'd yeah and i'm sure you've seen some of the stuff i've done i'm kind of at that point myself like i'm only to the point where i can master these wicked slideshows with yeah. music i'm like i got that down yeah i got powerpoint <laughs> awesome <Right>. but, <laughs> um but it and my neighbor uh Jake, he used to shoot videos for like his skateboarding friends back in okay. Vermont and stuff. So yeah, he yeah. used to like, and he's like, no, dude, we get a skateboard and that, that could be your dolly. And I'm like, oh, we're on the Mesa, man. He's like, okay, so we'll do this. Right. And then a clothes hanger and a wire and a, and then you can pan across. I'm like, all right, cool, dude, wow. let's do that. I, he's got all sorts of ideas and ideas. stuff. What's cool is that you guys kind of have, you guys have, a, um, what I was alluding to essentially is that you have a one of a kind uh, thing. So that, that coming to you, the opportunities, like you said, I feel like that is going to be something that um, you really could spearhead, dude. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, don't don't downplay it because I feel like if people are coming from all over the world to just right. go there and you're essentially one of the next ones, not necessarily the only one, but one of the next ones doing it, I think that you really have an opportunity to, one, teach people about sustainable living, but uh, also, you know, show them what a pursuit of greatness can be even so humbly. Of course, that's why I had you on. Because <laughs> you. I feel, yeah, you know, like even <laughs> even humbly, you know, you're doing those little things. You're bringing the silverware. You're bringing the, you know, you're, 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 you're putting ideas in places. Um, it seems like it would be small, but like, look at uh, Elon Musk. He has little ideas, and those little ideas end up legitimately changing the right. world. You know what I mean? So, and it's, kudos to you, man. It was for sure. thank you. No, I mean it's when I was on the rental staff. You know, and I wasn't on the build crew. I was on the rental staff, so yeah. I'm making beds, cleaning toilets, you know, fucking vacuuming and mopping. And right, then you go through two or three houses like that. Then it's time to check people in, and then right, day's done. Not enough for me to do. Right. Um. So with that, I have that knowledge. Now I'm building my own place. I'm still reaching out for help from friends of mine who's you know i would Sam, love to come the visit Englishman. And help. i would love to come help bro yeah. i would yeah but you said it, sam the englishman i cut oh, you yeah, off no, he's my, he's a, a carpenter you know so he does sure. a lot of carpentry stuff so okay now we're working on the roof and i'm like okay i'm not a carpenter right i don't want this to fall on my show fucking me, head please show me, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly so the, you know if anything if you always need to be kind of pushing for that knowledge or to learn more about how these things come together and um, just be open-minded about a lot of stuff as far as, you know, when I first heard about gray water and black water, I was like, well, that's fucking stupid. Right. And then <laughs> I started to see how it worked. And I was like, holy cow, that's really smart. <laughs> and then it's sustainable. I mean, at the end of the day, like you guys, I'm sure everything your, 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 your angle you're taking is to try to find sustainable. And when somebody comes up with an idea, I'm sure it seems ludicrous at first. And then you're always like, fuck, that's a great right. idea. Like actually. the cooling tubes they put in the buildings. Like, well, we're just going to put a, you know, a t uh, 10 foot or 20 foot culvert pipe in the back wall. And everybody's like, why the hell? And then in the heat of the summer, like when it's 95 degrees outside, you open that cooling tube door and open a vent in the greenhouse. And all of a sudden it's just science. And it convection starts pulling that cool air there. through. Mm, and there's cool. uh there is a video on my Instagram um where I show the cooling tube and it's just it was it happened to be a monsoon a couple years ago. So there's some weather going on, but it was just <laughs> you can see the flower arrangement just blowing. Yeah. Uh maybe I'll repost that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dug, but I you know, I I honestly didn't see every one of them, but now I'm interested. I want to see that. So so did the water come into it? Or? Uh it's just air. And it's okay. just, so uh, they you have it sloped down. So but water can't go just up. Just the convection okay. of the air coming in was and you can some days you open that cooling tube and you put your hand by it and it's just yeah. Cool. Ooh, burr. Yeah, yeah. You know, or at night when it's still, you know, it's good and hot outside. And and, and, the, and these these functions are, are just by closing it is enough in the winter to keep you from getting. Yeah, you close both ends. Okay. Okay, and then yep. it doesn't come through. So just for any of you guys listening, I know that we've talked a bajillion times about Earthships, but essentially, if you guys Google Earthships um, or you go to 
Earth Shippy. Earth Shippy. I'm gonna. I keep saying Earth Shippy. Ship Pie. Earth Shippy. Yeah. As well as on Instagram, you can see what we're talking about, and uh, you know. So essentially, you have a tire structure, you have a frame, and then all the pieces inside of it. Those systems are what we've been kind of going over, but everything is facing south. Like the majority of the the panels uh, are facing south, and yes. then the tire berms are built to the north side of it with these these. Uh, uh, I say berms, but the 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 structure the is wall. oriented to the north, right? Uh, yeah. So you're facing your front face is facing south for that Please passive solar. Passive gain. solar. Okay. Yep. And then you've got the tires, and then this is what we're talking about with uh, the cooling tubes that come from the back, which would be the north side, which essentially should be in the shade all the time. So that's how that would work. You know, or, or at least buried in the soil. So okay. That's kind of a geothermal wow. tap. Okay. Sure. You know, because I didn't realize that. So this is what is there space in there? It just sucks air out of the ground, or yeah, it's just a culvert pipe, like you would see under a road that lets water drain under no the road. Shit. You just put that under the tire work, and they keep pounding the tires around it. And it as you bear, berm the house, you're covering that cooling tube with soil. So, so I'm blown away that again, like I, you know, I'm learning as I go here, and I'm sure a lot of people know these things. But I mean, I would think like fucking BuzzFeed or somebody could put together a video of showing the difference in one the building material, like mm-hmm. you know they lay that shit out. Like they'll they'll say this is a month of trash from a normal home. This is a month of trash from somebody from right, like an you know, and 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 do the same thing for an, an Earthship, a like minded person like yourself trying to take care of the packaging and shit like that. And what's your monthly take compared to the next guy? Because I was told that the one of those original it could not. It, could possibly be a different one than what you guys were talking about, but I was told that they don't even use toilet paper. They use fucking rags and wash the rags and things like that. I feel like that's a little hardcore, but... I know toilet paper. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, bidet, whatever. I get you you could use mullen. Okay, mullen. Have you ever seen mullen? It's like... uh, it's like a, a fuzzy the lamb's ear stuff lamb's ear okay yes stuff. yes yeah, I, so I, that's natural toilet paper i yeah. have done it once and i try to remember to bring toilet paper since because well, you know it leaves some friends and you're like oh that's cool can't wait to <laughs> shower later <laughs> or in three days you know however those backpacking right. trips well it's only in season for so long that's true yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. otherwise you're using pine cones or something that's horrible yeah, i used to uh, when, <laughs> well never mind <laughs> a hunting story from wisconsin that nobody needs to oh, hear. come on hey well i'll tell you there's there's a <laughs> i would imagine that you didn't just come to to go from city boy to earth earth shipping so i'm sure that you've got some stories bro. sure yeah but you know, is, is there is there save that for part two or yeah there shit. you go there you go yeah yeah oh we got plenty of ground we could cover with this subject man so so uh is there any of that back where you're from in vermont any, any earth ship stuff at all or this is Really? There was a town called Sh- Soldiers Grove, okay. Wisconsin, which was like the leading solar producing, I don't know, in the Midwest or at least Wisconsin for years. Um, and then there's Viroco, Wisconsin, which is like a big co-op, farmer's market, hippy-dippy. Sure. You know, sure, but, sure. I mean, just cool people. And that whole area, the Driftless region where I grew up, is just a unique, cool area because it's where the glaciers would come up to oh wow and then go back so it's so green they didn't as come, fuck i'm yeah, sure yeah they didn't scrape it all the way and then you got the mississippi river valley oh wow so there's a lot of farmland that's like day and, and night stream. then i'm sure with the oh yeah and then i come out here i'm like why don't you guys plant more trees <laughs> and they're like because we're in the fucking desert right like how do you water them well fella? back in wisconsin we and he's like yeah back in wisconsin you could take the shovel shove it into the ground handle first and have little shovels growing off of it next oh my year, god you know? sure that's how yeah. fertile it is compared yeah, to yeah. here I saw I saw a cat that was doing something. Um, again, I feel like I'm I'm like just pushing you into like this entire portion of the continent. But uh, up north, this cat, you know, he 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 had a uh, similar uh, sort of accent like you do. But he was he had this this spot outside that was essentially his refrigerator that was buried. It was like a box that he dropped in the ground sure. and then kept things in it. I think it's called a root cellar. Yep. Right. Okay. And I mean, is something like that uh, applicable to something like you guys do? Because I know you were talking about using the freezer, but has somebody tried to? Store I've their food. I've been the thinking about that in my back berm. Okay. As I berm that up, I want to do do some kind of tire retaining wall. Okay. And then at some point, just get an old refrigerator and shove that into the berm as sure. well. Just kind of dig it out, place it in there. Maybe screw into it a little bit so I can tie that with some concrete to the tire work. Make like a but wall. then berm it and just have it on the north side where it's wow. That's interesting. And I've seen people do that in their uh, landscape walls. Um, we'll have we'll party at a friend's house on their anniversary. They have like a chili cook-off. And, sure. Um, you know, beer and friends and food. Dude, hippie food's the best. It's all like it's most of it's fun. homemade and stuff. We're know? not all vegan, vegetarian. No, no, no. Man. I don't even mean that. No, no, no. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I, I would think, man. Like <laughs> you throw you, down. Like if I, if I was in an Earthship mind and I was living in something like that, I would probably be raising, you know, uh, something to eat more likely than not chickens. But, you know, that it is. But because I try to apply myself to what you guys are doing. You like, want to, do, but you know? it's baby steps with that, too. Because if all of a sudden you get 
I got 10 chickens and five goats and all this shit. And then right. you're like, oh, God, I got to go to work. Somebody's got to feed this. Right. We got to water that. Right. And there's no water here. So there's no way to just have them right. graze on the mesa and shit. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. So there's a lot of challenges to it, but it's just taking those steps to get towards that type of lifestyle. Once you get everything else under control, then you're like, all right, now I can do more so, chicken. So, so for all my listeners out there, first step is bring your own fucking culinary to your work. Just little thing. <laughs> yeah, the single use stuff. Just try yeah. and slowly cut that shit out of your the life. bags, I think that's easy. Uh, there's there's like a Save Mart or some shit. It's like one of those super bargain basement uh, food places. But any way that you can not bring plastic bags home from the grocery store, I think right. is another one that's a good tip to give to people to baby steps it. Um, you know, maybe using uh, uh, glass, I guess, when you can. You know, I or know that it's just better, period. But Clean canteen. You okay. know, I got like a 64. It's like a growler sized stainless steel I like steel how you equated canteen. that it was well done <laughs> um, yeah no if, and if you get the the USDA or whatever this nutritional fact sticker on your clean canteen you they can fill it at a brewery for you oh wow so it can be a growler or a water bottle I didn't know that okay yeah Very as cool. long as you have that sticker on it says you know do not operate you know surgeon general warning sticker I think right and you can print that off and just stick it on packaging there. tape that shit to shit. your clean canteen well I, I have one that's made of glass and i'm always afraid of it like sits put away so that way right you know i gotta bring it down and they have to tape it on the top and yeah shit like that, you so know? this way like if you go camping you don't have to worry about your glass growler sure kicking that over by the campfire and sure. breaking it and being like shit now so does it gotta... kind of seal it it's like pressurized then right the yeah the clean canteen it's just a screw top okay i see yeah I, well i saw one okay so i was in where the fuck was i uh what is that island called in texas that all the kids go galveston to for... not galveston the island, San, South Padre. South, South Padre, Padre, yeah. So they, they, this brewery there, and uh, apologies if you ever, anybody from there, listen to this, whatever the fuck your guys' name is, um, they had these, they, 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 you know, proprietary, they made them themselves, these growlers that you could fucking clamp it shut and put your beer in it, and it was like ready to go, like you're carrying coffee like to work. Like a flip top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it would like latch and it would vacuum, you know, and it would yep. suck down, and I was like, ah! You know, like when I saw it, because, you know, I do the backpacking, and it, even though it would weigh me down by like an extra three pounds, sure. you know, it was just like, I would totally, you know. But, but you could drop it and it just ching. Yes, it exactly. Went, right, exactly. That was like, you know. So, okay. So, um, I wanted to cr- cover, I only had like three questions that I wrote down. I do write some of them down. A little okay. Bit. <laughs> no worries. We've been all over the fucking place. I know. <laughs> well, and I, I think it's good to go that way because it's it's more natural, and I think it's, you know, it's... Question number seven. You know, I don't like that shit. I like to. I like to be very. You know. So open it says about here in nineteen. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's move forward. Exactly seven months on the timeline. No. Um, so what are some unique things that only someone in an Earthship would have to deal with, or maybe have as a blessing once you, once you are in jump the fence, if you will. Um, yeah. Or, or what would they consider to be a blessing? Like, what's one thing that you could tell me about that it's like my morning consists of my night, can, whatever. You know, I don't know. I'm, well, especially if you build your own or if you just find one that you love and you move into it, whatever, however you get to living in one, you're taking control of so many aspects of your life that you rely on somebody or so many other people to take care of for you. Like I said, you're the power company, water company, sewage treatment, food production. Um, you, you just take a lot of that into your own hands and you're eliminating bills as far as electricity. You got solar power, so boom, you can run all everything you sized your system to off of the sun so i guess i didn't ask that question maybe this could be a better way to angle that would it be cheaper to live an earth an earthship life and i mean sure i mean it can be there's an initial investment with it but you don't have those constant bills right you know we they have propane hooked up to them so if you have a propane tank you're still maybe once a year filling it versus sure. a regular conventional house i was talking to a guy like and the bomb uh, was gonna go yeah, off i don't know what the that fuck? was <laughs> Um, he's like, yeah, we got to get our propane tank filled every, whatever, three months. I'm like, Jesus, how big is it? 500 gallon? I'm like, fuck, dude. Fuck. We to got- fill it up? That's yeah. expensive. Right. So our our tanks, if they're 500 gallons, especially a 500 gallon tank in an airship will last up to two and a half, three years. Because yeah. you're cooking with it, right? I cooking mean- and hot water. Okay. That That's makes sense. It. Okay. Yep. On demand hot water, but we also have uh, solar hot water as well. Which then goes through and transfers heat into the hot water. I was going to say. So, so do you guys burn at all inside of these things? Any? I mean, I realize you're on a mesa. There's no fucking trees, but do you guys right. burn wood at all? Is there fireplaces in these? I've seen them, but I didn't know if. In the older ones, yes, and they would come a couple times of the year. We might need it. Sure. But it got to the point where the buildings were getting so uh, evolving and they're performing better to where they're like, well, we really don't need. Sure. A fireplace. You know, it's fun at Christmas. If you're cold, fucking make a cup of tea. Right. Or go outside and then come back in. Put on Your a glasses sweater. are still going to fog up. Right. Yeah. 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 Put well, on sweatpants and a sweatshirt. Uh, 
and the reason why I asked that is because I, I had seen another system. I know I'm just like pulling from these nowheres. I don't even have reference here, mm -hmm. but there was a, another system that I had seen where the guy had taken copper tubing, uh, I don't know, like yay, like maybe, sure. maybe an inch, maybe three quarter inch, and they had, they had wrapped it around the stove pipe. And right. they were trying to recycle that for their hot water, but I feel like that's a lot of work and it would probably be a system that would be a pain in the ass. But do you guys utilize anything like that? I mean, I wonder. Just the panel. Uh, so we got the solar panels in the front face of the building and in the middle is the solar thermal. Um, for the hot water. Okay. Right. And then that just is piped in to a conventional hot water heater. Okay. That it's just a heat transfer. So it doesn't have to work as hard to heat it. So you're using less propane. Yeah. The that? sun is out. It's going to, the, the pump for the glycol solution in that solar panel to heat the water turns on when the sun comes out because the sun hits its own, its panel and starts circulating that glycol solution through. That glycol solution is getting heated in the hot water panel, and it's going through the hot water heater inside of the house, Moving transferring it. the heat wow. just in a tubing. Okay. So it's the water inside the tank is now taking the heat from that, or it's removing, you know. Wow. So there's actually, the it doesn't have to move the water back and forth. It's just <laughs> moving the heat. Correct. Yeah, okay. it's just moving the glycol solution through the solar aspect or the I, solar portion. I'm gonna have portion. to fucking Google the hell out of one of those. I know. Things. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I, I may not be the best. It's it, it's a lot easier with pictures, um, but at any rate, we're using the sun to heat the water during the day. You when you turn the hot water on, the hot water might the heater might kick on for like ten seconds. Sure. Just for that little span of water that's not in the tank, it's not at the hot water heater. Level it's that it shuts the, off on yeah. or whatever, sure. So the sure. stuff in the hot water heater could be at 110 degrees, but that little bit of pipe between the hot water heater and the sink right. has dropped down to 80 degrees. So it takes whatever. a second, like a normal house. Right. right. My, I'll tell but you what. Then my, it'll turn off right away. My hot water heater is 20 minutes, or yeah, 20 minutes. What am I trying to say? 20 years. I don't know. <laughs> Can I cut that part out? Um, it's 20 years old, and it takes like probably... A good full like eight minutes before the water gets hot at the back of my house. Sure. So I'm burning the hell out of water, and I feel so horrible just like because it's like ice cold until like right at the you know like the full eight nine minutes goes right. through, and then I I don't know about eight minutes, maybe five minutes, but longer than it should, and I waste a lot of water. So I hate that. You know what I mean? Right. So and I, that's I, where they had put in uh, timer switches so that <laughs> off of the hot water system and the furthest bathroom from the hot water tank, you can hit a timer. And you set it at two minutes. For that two minutes, it's just moving the water internally. Wow. So that way it's preheating it. So once that click comes this is a, back. So this is like a system that's pre-built? You guys didn't engineer all that? or uh, I'm sure. I, I mean, we're just taking things that people have, you know, I mean, the whole passive solar thing, the, the cave dwellings, you know, that shit's been around for thousands of years. And Mother Earth News, I'm sure if you look back into those sure, magazines, sure. there's all sorts of different systems. We're just kind of honing and doing our best and evolving them from probably something he that's read in crazy. mother earth magazine. Right. You know, and he's like, well, fuck, I can do it better than that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, that's awesome. Go ahead, do it better than that. But we're kind of, they, they've gotten to a point where the systems are, you could take them anywhere and they're almost foolproof. Right. And people like you mentioned reverse osmosis or, you know, have you thought about doing this or having that? And we're like, well, yeah, but this works. It's simple. You guys remind, me of, less you, you guys remind me of like how a movie set kind of can do things. Cause a lot of times movie sets, they'll, they'll, they will just on the spot, like things will just be like, what's best for the scenario. You know what I mean? And you think that there is a hell of a lot of thought going into it, which there is in the, in the greater scheme of things. But when it's actually executed, I feel like it's so specific to the application. You know what right. I mean? That you guys are probably almost proprietary in what you're doing because nobody else can recreate. They could, but they would be like, well, how did they do it? Like, you're kind of, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. One so. would, he, Mike would just take all this information and knowledge and he just kind of put it together and look at it. And then they'd try it. And I'm like, okay, well, if we could take out this part of it and make right. it Disseminate cheaper and easier. And really, the systems are super, super simple. You know, off-grid application where it's, it's you know, set up to work all the time. Like, the water system is super easy. Could you put in reverse osmosis and UV and all this other shit? You're adding, sure can. You're adding things that break. But our, exactly. Okay, okay. You're adding expense and possible, you know, problems in the future as right. far as, oh, fuck, my... UV filter thing broke, and right. now my water isn't going to be as we clean. Have fucking as, Giardia. Yeah, oh, damn it. <laughs> right. So you just you know you set it up as simple as possible, and as the technology advances, or you know everything gets more commonplace and easier to run. Sure, you could start introducing that to the systems, but set it up as simple as possible from the get go. <laughs> so you could take that water filtration system, the water organizing module. And basically throw all that 
PVC and pumps and filters into a big duffel bag, jump on a fucking plane, go to Puerto Rico, clean Set it water. up again. So did you hear my... That is amazing because I, I didn't even think about that. So I, uh, did you hear the podcast we did with Nelson Santos, the guy from the... Um, he was in um, Puerto Rico when we did the podcast. Like we did it over Skype. But No, I didn't, but I will download it. Yeah, he volunteers all over the world, but he runs an organization that um, essentially people come to him with the, hey, we're, we're a nonprofit XYZ for XYZ purpose, XYZ country. Um, and he brings together a directory of these different groups. And then, um, you know, and I've heard some this and that about it, but there is um, almost an entire ecosystem built around it. And it's almost like volunteering tourism. And it has been abused in some places, but Nelson's, um, his he goes out of his way to make it to where it's it's sustainable. And he usually vets the good ones. So essentially what he does is like some guy will, there was one on his page. Um, uh, it's called Volunteer... Damn it, Nelson! Don't yell at me. Volunteer abroad for free. I I will, I'll fucking tag it in here because I feel like it's it's pertinent right. now. But a, a volunteer abroad for for free. But smilingtimes.com is is his site that'll get you to that stuff. But he has a group, and so these guys from India have this nonprofit, and they were trying to restore this ancient palace, this thousands year old palace in India. Um, I believe that the idea was to try to help um, people that live there or monks or something. Um, maybe this is not the best example, but a okay. lot of there's there's ones where he feeds kids, there's ones where they build schools, sure. there's ones where they they were in. Uh, Puerto Rico trying to put power back um, and and building like literally dropping poles in the ground with people volunteering because they don't have the infrastructure or the pay to actually put back up like P&M does right. power cable. So some of the stuff that they run into is like literally just like hundreds of kids that are just living under a, a bridge in India or something like that. And for a guy like yourself, like I said to you, it's 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 it may be small potatoes and you're thinking of it as the angle of only the earthship. But I feel like you could take your duffel bag full of water filtration and show up and literally bless like a fucking village. One well, same with thing your, with, with power system, as well. Um, so the at the earth ships, the plumber is Lou. He's the guy that he goes to India. He goes to Puerto Rico. He goes to all these places and helps kind of with the building, world-y. water catch. Sure. And then that. And then there's uh, Chris, uh, the systems. He was my systems manager. And he's figured out how to take, um, you know, those packs that you can charge up and then charge your, you know, uh, portable battery pack. Yeah, okay. And you could take it, leave it in your car, and then if your battery dies, it's like you like a trickle charge kind of thing. He takes the guts out of all that shit and then builds turns that into a simple survival power system. Wow. With a and then you can get a roll out like a flexi film solar panel, same shit. Throw that into a duffel bag. Call the airport before you go and be like, hey, I have, <laughs> this is going to look like a bomb. Some strange shit. <laughs> Don't use that word, though. It's gonna, right. This say is going to look sketchy. Something very neutral. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to what show. Say? Yeah. I, I will be there with the bag. I want to go through it with somebody and show you exactly what it is. What so it, is. it makes it to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. To the place where they're going. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I got you. Um, We've been so, talking a while. I understand. Right? No, I'm not getting excited, though, because, <laughs> right. you know, I... I all these things that they get to go and do. And that was one of my issues was I'm here, you know, and I got to meet a lot of people from around the world and tour them through the buildings and just watch their fucking life the change. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And they're just like, Oh wow. And I was like, I want to go do this. And my boss was like, well, too bad. You're on my crew. Yeah. I'm like, well, shit. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I can see <laughs> a difference I, in opinion, and I, you know, and that's, you know, it's hard for her to, it was hard for her to keep people there because that's, your job is you're behind the scenes and you know we didn't always get respected a bunch especially from the office staff was which, which was unfortunate yeah um but the crew they you know they were cool yeah yeah i'm cool with them kept on top of shit yeah well and i think but it was an thank you can go a long way on there that yeah it, it, I could see, you know, and I could see like when you guys are doing something like this, there's no right way to do it, if you will. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because you guys, are, again, are doing something that's kind of proprietary. You know what I mean? And you can't keep everybody happy. You and, can't. You know, yeah. everybody has their own idea of how things should be done. And that's why I brought back the ego. Like, I, there's a three or four people there I just love to throw an ounce of mushrooms at and be like, hey, <laughs> do these Go and to the lake. center, reset, Think. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and drop your bullshit and let's all move so, forward together. So when you guys had BuzzFeed come through, did you notice a spike in interest across the board for things? Like, did that did that have like a... I may be using... Is it palpable? Is it an actual... Yeah. <laughs> I, and, and it happens. Uh, there's another... I forget the name of the Facebook page... But they had a video that had like 18 million views, you know, and Mike's like, oh, my God, do you see that video? We're going viral. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. And we're getting exposure. But these are videos that we should be making. Right. So we're putting it out yeah. there and getting the YouTube views and getting that yes. YouTube monies. Right. And getting people to go he and help him make the money. It. And I was like, all right, well, I'll help you with that. And this is after I quit. 
<laughs> and uh, he's like, all right, well, I'll get you the passwords for Instagram and you can work on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the people that were supposed to be doing that just threw a fit. So that's off the table. Right. And again, that's where I want to give them mushrooms and be like, drop, drop your ego and let's <laughs> try some different ideas, man. Let's Come do on. This. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. You've been here for 25 years, whatever. But when you only post once every two weeks on Instagram, yeah. that's not good for the. Right. Algorithms well, and especially now that he's trying to create basically a tourist attraction or a business. Right. And I mean, it's slash, there, slash. but we could there's so much more. If you we could have more followers on both right. Facebook, Instagram. Well, and get these ideas that. into people's heads. I mean that's that's you know what I mean? Like to get these sustainable ideas and to get a different lifestyle. I mean, if you can get even one guy to do that, look at you, your entire life has changed and you're probably right. you would be pissing off all the companies that are looking at for profit gains on on animal products and on bags and all these things. You are the outlier and and, and because the rest of us just follow along. And I say the rest of us because even though I'm partially enlightened, I like to call it, I don't practice as much. You aren't woke? Uh, yeah, I ain't woke yet, man. But <laughs> but once I get enough you know, once you get enough steam going with an idea, uh, it, it, it's just the natural evolution of humans. Like you're, you know, you, you could essentially have like a big group on Facebook following these Earthships. You know what I mean? And have like a real grassroots community right. and essentially be growing more of these in other places instead of them having to come from around the world. You know, to put that up. I hear that he charges for blueprints or something like that. Is that like a thing to have like actual vetted blueprints? Well, I mean, to get stamped, you know, by an architect blueprints yeah there's gonna be a fee for that because there's a lot of time goes into that sure. and we have interns you know they get paid i'm sure um probably not the best but they get money right for stuff and things but they come in and make the plans so you know your window boxes are going to be this and the, the heights yeah, need yeah. to be here and the depths and distances wow. and because there's a lot involved it sounds like okay yeah just a pile of tires and some bottles and cans but and bullshit. structural integrity i mean sitting on tires man that sounds <laughs> you know shifty <laughs> when i came down for the academy, I was like, I fucking know everything about her shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I get my first uh, class with Phil. He started talking. I was like, I don't know a fucking a thing. thing. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm glad I'm doing this yeah. because I would have thought, okay, yeah, I, I know what I'm doing and I can do this. And I would have gotten to a point where I'm like, oh, shit, it's falling in. Or right. you It's know. always the gotchas, those little things, those little spots in between right. where you're like, and where that's the where fuck the is academy, the YouTube for that? <laughs> the academy helped out a bunch because people are like, well, he's just tricking people in the paying him to work for him and i'm like well i guess but it's yeah. also you're learning like yeah, yeah. i paid to go to school for yeah. heating and air conditioning and i fixed teach a man to fish you know right. what i mean like i mean if you're going to take the skill i again i go back to it it, it, it should be their only goal to selflessly want to teach people about these things not be like if you pay me if you pay me, you know, because right. th these are things that are ultimately going to make the world either, uh, I mean, literally make the world a better place. I mean, this is the reason why humans are, are considered to be such a plague on the on the planet is how we live, you know what I mean? And to change that thing, even with little habits, and then if that was to ultimately, you know, and I'm not saying this is the end all, right? The, the Earthship world is not the end all. And Mike says that too. He's yeah. like, this isn't the one and final thing. Answered I mean, everything. If this table that we're sitting at is the world of sustainability, I'm over here, Earthship is just over here, this little circle kind of scratching away and ideally there's people scratching away in other parts of the table and we'll all kind of come together at sure. some point i like how you put that like fuck we got it right. all right cool right give me some straw bales a couple tires right. some adobe bricks <laughs> bottles cans fuck whatever some mushrooms and some yep. happy camper come on it's yep. gonna happen well, after work <laughs> after work <laughs> no, that's that it's not square man <laughs> damn <laughs> Well, cool, man. I think the, the I had one question left for you, and then I think we can get. Tell me about. We already did. We did the shit out of Earthship Academy, so I think we have we have tackled that. So where can I find you, man? I mean, give me the the stickies. We got Instagram is going to be the Earth sh Earthship Earthshipy Earthshipy. Thank yep. you. Earth spell it for me. Can you spell it for me? Earth E A R T H Shippy S H I P P I E. Okay. All right. Or Earthship Pie, Earthship Earth's Pie, Hippie, okay. and that came from a friend of mine I worked at the Ski Valley with, and he knew I was at the Earthships. And whenever I showed up to work one day, he's like, "What's up, Earthshipy?" I'm like, "I like that, dude. yeah, I'm gonna yeah. take it, yeah." That's a new handle, and that's on Facebook as well. Yeah, Facebook. Okay. I have my own um, page, Earthshipy. Uh, that, that way, I don't have like cause I, a lot of people would start friend requesting me. Sure, and I'm like, well. On your personal, Facebook that can get problematic. Can get a little recreational, outragey for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Where Instagram is like my happy place. Like sure. I look at memes and follow yeah. you know, zero waste. And I feel like it's not so wah, wah, in your yeah. face. You know, Facebook has just got so much going on. And I follow some groups that talk very strong. You know, they're they're all uh, entrepreneurs, social media. A lot of them sell stuff on websites. Sure. Fuck, man. Like that's all they talk about is the algorithms and the blah blah blah. And eventually, I just like my head hurts, and I'm like, I could see why. 
you know, when you get into something, even like you're, you know, you're thinking about podcasting, like you're good at that part, you know, you're, yeah. you're good at the part you're good at, but right. then you go and look at this other shit and it's like, fuck man, I better pay somebody to do this. Cause like, there's just so much to it, bro. And not yeah. even pay somebody, but if you were to try to legitimately utilize Facebook and try to, let's say, make money or throw ad campaign at it, it's a science now, man. Like it's, right. you know, and you see the result of that with all that crap that comes at you on Facebook where I think Instagram is, it's pretty and it's, it's easy it's to digest. It's simpler. It's more clean yeah. cut and streamlined and. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten what I got like fourteen hundred followers, and it's better I don't than know, me, man. If, well, if you notice, like once you get up there to a certain point, all of a sudden you're like, you're up to fourteen hundred fifty, and then all of a sudden you're down to thirteen hundred and ninety, yeah. and you're well, like, yeah, and there's all the bots the that happen. they'll like the you bots, and then unlock yeah. you, and like you, then and, and, and I, there's nothing you can do about it except for just gaining the more, you know, using the hashtags that get the people that are actually genuinely right. interested in what you well, do. Well, and the thing that Gary Vaynerchuk talks about is the dollar eighty method. So you essentially find nine top hashtags and comment on those nine hashtags. I Maybe I'm fucking it up. I'm sure I'm fu- if any of you guys Something call like me that. out, I don't care. But yeah. it's like you do a lot of, of essentially... Uh, uh, interacting with people that would be under your, you know, like I, for the Santa Fe brew one, I did a uh, Southwest brewery or something hashtag. And I found just fucking millions of posts that were, were thrown on that. Sure. So I would, I was, you know, and to me, because I mean, if, if you guys don't know by now, I'm interested in a million things. So like I'm in that feed and I'm like finding different stuff that, that, I legitimately have an interest in, but I, I come from the, the Percher Bird side. It's not my personal. And I'm like, hey, this is fucking cool. Check out this podcast we did on a brewery, blah, blah, blah. You know, check out this, right. you know, Earthship guy in Nevada. I don't know, picking a place. You know, check out this one I just did to Ryan. You know, check out what. And, and that is where I, I've noticed that I'll get big engagement. Um, you still get the trolls. I've even had people go out of their way to like write me these nice long instant or messages, you know, that come in and it's like, Hey, we're a family Instagram group and we travel the world and we'd love to be your friend and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Hey, cool. I'm blah, blah, blah. I write this big thing back. Unfriend me. I'm like, man, I can't, I get so <laughs> sick of it. I'm like, uh, you know, so I, I make sure that it's like, you know, like Ryan, it took us a while. What have we been at this? Like two months before we finally got the cast. Right. Together. Yeah. So, you know, th- to me that seemed genuine because I see you actually interacting and you know, you're not some robot. It's not perfect. Everything and either is mine. And, and right. I'm like, there's a human there. It's well, not. And that's part of it. Just, you know, cause people ask me questions on my Instagram posts. They're like, so can you do this? Or is this applicable here? Yeah. Or I'm like, yeah, of course it is. Or I just like their comment or, yeah. you know, where on Facebook, it just seems like recreational outrage. Right. And right. On, even on my YouTube video. Cause I said at one point, I'm like, humans are the worst things for the planet. Just our daily life. And it yeah. truly it is. It really I think, is. Yeah. Because I'm, there's too many just, of us, man. Just fucking everything up. And people are like, if humans are so bad for the planet, you should kill yourself. And I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I wasn't even talking political. Well, I mean, man. Like, okay, fine. I, yeah. meh. But <laughs> the way I'm living is probably, I don't, I don't know what their problem was. But yeah, I was going through the, and that's another thing, like, I shouldn't go through the comments. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I like this rule. This is, this is take something them too, too personal. <laughs> right. And, and like what I try to do is I try to give them, I give them a one. Like if I get a hater, I give you, I'll give you, Hey man, you know, not like straight up fuck you, but you know, like I'll give them, let me try to give some thought to it. Even What's if up they pal? What's your problem? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then if they, you know, you get those keyboard warriors that are just sitting there like, come on, come on, mom. No, I'm in the basement. I'm like, computer. you know, and he's, he, he right. finishes his like two page thing about how he's got all this knowledge on the thing. And I'm like, man, like, I don't even think I know that much. Like, good for, you know, clap for you. But I never write back. I give them one. You know what I mean? And sure. then they get that one. And from there, it's like, if you keep spamming my page, I'll just block you, bro. You know what I mean? Get right. out of here. I don't need you around. You or know? If they, so. Yeah, I've had people talk shit. And I'm just like, well, take your ideas and set the world on fire, man. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, can if, apparently do it better than me, If dog. you can use it, I'm doing <laughs> awesome. If you got something else better, I can't wait to see you take over the right. internet with your new whatever the fuck you're going to do. Yeah, your, your spaceship, yeah. not Earthship. I don't know. Can right. I? Did that work? Can I? <laughs> Sustainable housing efforts. Yeah, whatever, yeah on yeah. the moon. They're, they're, we're the Earthship on the moon crew, Actually, man. I will donate to your GoFundMe to send you to Mars, dude. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Later. So we got earthshippy.com is your website. Yep. Okay, we covered your Facebook, your Instagram. And my, my blog is... It's coming together. It baby steps, everybody. Baby Just steps, a little bit at a time. Everything. Just start doing things, and it'll get better. It'll get easier and better. That's right. everything you do. <laughs> right. So the blog is on the page, though? It's on Earthshippy? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So check them out. Make sure that you guys follow them on Instagram. If you guys have any questions or you guys want to look into doing some more Earthship stuff, absolutely hit my boy Ryan up. He knows everything there is to know about it. And I think that you guys, <laughs> I mean, you know, in a sense, there is a lot Humble, more to yeah. be known. Yeah. You know, uh, but, but very knowledgeable on the subject. And if you guys want to check out some of the beautiful pictures of the Earthships that he's dealt with and worked on and is building now and the Academy, um, everything he has on there is positive. I mean, the man's truly pursuing greatness. And I, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Well, thank you for man. having me. It's, it's, awesome. it's been a 
a great opportunity to drive down and my first time in Albuquerque. So this say, is, uh, I'll remember this yeah, for a while. Yeah, we're on location <laughs> at Satellite Coffee off of Central. Um, this is actually the one off Central. I always tag the one off University, but super nice place. Shout out to you guys for letting us do this here. So uh, yeah, and, and Albuquerque, how do you like it? Is it shitty? You love it? I yeah. what well, I always heard like is there's nothing to go down to Albuquerque for. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, yeah. we could try it. Yeah. We got but a zoo and shit. So <laughs> far, so good. No, and I want to get to the bio park. Uh, I met and toured some people from there through the Earthships one day. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, I'll come down to Albuquerque sometime. Like, dude, we'll get you tickets. We'll take you back yeah. behind the scenes. I'm like, yeah. oh, fuck. Right. But they're gone for the weekend. So, oh, yeah. man. Well, I know that my buddy did a space tour. Apparently, they do uh, they do like a, like of the space port down in las cruces sure and i guess they do like a thing of that too so yeah there's some, a lot of shit i have yet to check out as well man but i don't think you're missing out on like some crazy nightlife like downtown sucks i know you're not like a like a nightlife you no, don't seem I, like the kind of guy to go out and like Wee, as but. the sun is setting i get my ass across the bridge out to the mesa right. home otherwise i'm gonna turn into a pumpkin so right <laughs> oh, okay i gotta get home but i'm sure you wake up kind of with the sun too because i mean living that lifestyle that yeah. sounds like it would be much better to like situate like that instead of like blocking out the neighbors Next door in my call to sack. No neighbors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, 11 people in my unit. One square mile. 11 people. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, brother, thank you. No, thank you. All right. Man. Man. Cool. Appreciate it.